Now, also on this program, I've railed against the lawless cesspool of social media for years, as you know. The abuse and misinformation on the social media platforms is extraordinary. The digital giants make fortunes every day, yet they fail to keep their own platforms in order. Lies are spread, the truth is censored, people are abused and threatened, and the digital giants carry on blamelessly. It's a legally complex area, and ordinarily government regulation should be the last resort. But the Prime Minister has signalled today that he's looking to find innovative ways to try and bring some order to the digital world, to make social media a bit less antisocial. Cowards who go anonymously onto social media and vilify people and harass them and bully them and engage in defamatory statements, they need to be responsible for what they're saying. I mean, I can't come out here and you can't come here and start doing things like that. We all know who each of us are. We're responsible for the things that we say and that we do. But yet social media has become a, has become a, a coward's palace where people can just go on there, not say who they are, destroy people's lives and say the most foul and offensive things to people and do so with impunity. Now that's not a free country where that happens. That's not right. They should have to identify who they are. And you know, the companies, if they're not going to say who they are, well, they're not a platform anymore, they're a publisher. They're a publisher. And you know what the implications of that means in terms of those issues. So people should be responsible for what they say in a country that believes in free speech. I think that's very important. And I think that issue is, and the technology that enables it, and the lack of accountability that sits around it, is just not on. And you can expect us to be leaning even further into this. Well, let's see what they come up with. One common idea is to try to get rid of that anonymity, to ensure people post under their own names. That would change behaviour, all right, but it might be very, very hard to implement and enforce. Ensuring that digital giants are treated like publishers might be a fairer way to deal with this, making them liable for defamation action rather than people who are hosting pages on their platforms. On the same theme, let me give you an example of just how silly these platforms can be, how they impose double standards. Have a look at this funny meme I posted the other day on Instagram. It's a T-shirt that says, buy a man, eat fish the day, teach man to lifetime. Joe Biden. Now, obviously, it mocks Biden with an obviously fake quote based on the famous saying about teaching someone to fish. But have a look at how Instagram has whacked a fact check at the bottom to ensure that people know Joe Biden never actually said that. Really, they do that over what's clearly a joke. Yet the digital giants last year wouldn't publish any posts that pointed to the Wuhan Institute of Virology as the likely source of the COVID-19 virus. They censor real news like that, but now they fact check jokes about Joe Biden. That's how warped these social media companies are. We'll see what changes eventuate, but whatever Canberra does do, it'll be difficult to frame and enforce, and it will be looked at carefully right around the world.